Welcome to Dignity Leadership Podcast. I'm Rich Levine, Chief Talent Development Officer and Founder of Dignity Leadership Consulting. I practice leadership using my Master's of Science degree in Leadership and Change and a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Sociology. I've examined how people work or maybe fail to work together my entire career. In this podcast series, I want to expose the lessons that I have learned through work and life with the intent to encourage more people to learn, grow, and become better leaders. Together, we can create a world of dignity. So today's show, we're going to talk about strength and conditioning. Mm -hmm. Flex them muscles. So welcome to the show. Oh, wonderful to be here. Thank you. So what I need you to do is help out. Tell me, tell us about yourself. Tell the audience who you are. In whatever words you want, you can go, you can go rogue, but also explain what is a strength coach when it comes to leadership. All right. So, uh, Erica, I am Aquarius, a red <laughs> dog mom, and uh, I am a Gallup certified strength coach, and I help people accomplish great things by doing what they naturally do best. Um, leading conversations, helping people focus on um, my strengths, which are communication, woo, maximizer, achiever, and positivity. So for anybody who's gone through StrengthsFinder or is familiar, even the words give um, little helps, tips, tricks, uh, little indications of what that means. I love to talk, but it means <laughs> I also love people and understanding people and helping people, the maximizer in me, wants them to be the best versions of themselves. I always say I use my full ass with everything, and I hope that everyone around me will do the same. Uh, unfortunately, all the same, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. um, that's, idiots. that's right. And uh, so what I do is help people find their groove, build confidence in themselves. You can do that when you know who you are and you get to do what you do best every day. Yes, well said. Very so well said. There's, there's a lot of, so when you're talking about strength finders, the Clifton strength finders, that's an assessment. There's other assessments out there, you know, like the insights, the disc profile, different ones. And this is just another tool that helps you find out. And you mentioned it, what's really good about leadership is I don't believe you can be a leader until you understand who you are. So with that, the person that I know who knows themselves better than anybody in the world on the show today is Michael <laughs> Ray Newman. So welcome, Michael. Appreciate you having me, brother. So you're a disc trainer, correct? Right. Yep. Yep. So you're a disc trainer. I'm a TTI insights trainer. And you are a Clifton Strength Finder trainer. So there's three different things. There's tools out there to help people to find out what's more about them. But what's really going on in the world today is, is it seems like when you get into a job that everybody is always trying to fix your weakness. Mm. You're doing it wrong, you know, and then they want to come in and they want you to try to do it. And for me, most importantly, you, you hire people to do a job, right? Back away. Let them do their job. <laughs> seems right? easy, right? Yeah, it seems easy. And sometimes you have to let them fail in order for them to learn. But some people are like, oh, you know, we're in business. And, you know, if I let them fail, it's, we're going to have a catastrophe. That's not necessarily the case. But using something like, like Strength Finders as a way to help, and it's, it's part of, um, we talked about another podcast that we recorded earlier, is, is getting people in the right seat, right? Mm -hmm. Get them on the bus and then get them in the right seat. And... The other thing that's, that's unique that you see in the world is go out to any social media platform, watch any TV news at night, and what do you see? It's, you see nothing but weakness, right? There's this global mm -hmm. obsession with weakness. As soon as somebody makes a mistake, it's on the front page news, right? Especially if you're a celebrity, you're famous, you got a lot of money, <laughs> you make a mistake and people, are, they're like ready to, to hammer drive down. that. Yeah, hammer down, <laughs> right? But, and, and what does that do? That leads to like stress and anxiety. And then people always wonder, like, where does this stuff come from? So I'm going to take you back. For, for some of us in the room, this might be a really long time ago. And then for the younger ones like Erica, this is like just not that long ago. Grade school. Our schools are set up to exploit weakness. Mm -hmm. So, Michael, we, we established earlier that you're smarter than me. No. All right. <laughs> no. You're my teacher. What are you going to do in grade school if I bomb my math test? What did, what did my teachers no, do to me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or what? That'll work. What should I That'll do? That'll work. What would you do to me if I bomb my spelling test? I bomb my math test. What do you do? Well, if, as a bomber myself, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, in second grade, the first time we, or it was actually third grade, the first time that they asked you to ask you to ask ask, ask you to read out loud. I don't know if you did this. You're so young, mm-hmm. but she said, "Okay, everybody's going." Miss Ridley, Miss Ridley, my third grade teacher. She said, "We're going. Everybody's going to read a paragraph." You ever do that? You read one paragraph. Mm-hmm. Bobby, you take the next paragraph. Sandy, you take the next paragraph. Michael Ray, you're going to take the next paragraph. Yeah, I lost my spot every single time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I found out how to do that. So that was this was in second grade. Third grade, I mastered it. Second grade, I said, okay, I'll do it. I was waiting for my time. I was just bebopping around. My paragraph came around, and I stumbled and staggered through it. And she said, Michael Ray, read that again. So I read it again. She goes, get up here in front of the room. She goes, read it one more time. And she handed me the book. And I started reading it, and I stumbled and stammered through it. And she slapped the book out of my hand and said, I swear, boy, you're as dumb as a box of rocks. Go sit down. Mm. You're exactly right. How People, did they set you up to feel. The rest of my life, what was I when I walked into school? Not box of rocks. Reader. Dumb as a box of rocks. Yep. It taught me how to manipulate it. And I remember, like, Kevin E. was saying, I'd like, okay, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Practice reading it, practice reading it, practice yeah. reading it. And the route that got to me, they would say, Sandy, take the next paragraph. I'd be like, oh, no, and I tried it, and I screwed it up every time. So. You know, and the cool part about it is, is so somebody, educational-wise, and we talked about this in the podcast, mm-hmm. I've got a bunch of degrees. You don't. You've got school of hard knocks. I don't. And we've got to figure out how to make those work together, which comes in your strength finders. We'll get into that. But you, you're carrying this going forward that you're dumb as a box of rocks, but you're not because you have strengths, you have skills, you have things that you can do. Just mad be- skills, bro. Just, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just because you can't get up in front of a room and read, you can get up in front of a room and light it up. I've seen you do it. I've seen you in speaking engagements, which is cool. So what <laughs> happens is, you know, at a young age, people are conditioned through the subconscious that they're always wrong. And it's demoralizing, and it stinks, and we're telling them what we've got it to makes fix. Makes exactly yeah. right. Yeah, and then you start curling up, and then we have all these. We have people that have disorders, you know, anxiety disorders, stress disorders, and everybody's like, "Why a bunch of worlds become a bunch of snowflakes?" Well, no, <laughs> um, I think we're just, you know, people are exploiting the wrong thing. We're not looking at the opportunity. They're seeing the glass half full mm-hmm. when they should be seeing the, or they're seeing the glass half empty. I'm sorry. See, I'm trained. When you should see the glass half full, you got to see the good in things. And that's one reason strength finders is so powerful. Yeah, and we're gonna dive into that. So don't don't steal my thunder on me. All right, we gotta we gotta stay on track. On point. On point. But um, so success is found more often when people focus on talents versus focusing on the weaknesses. So just think what would happen if you would spend energy, pick a sport, baseball, football, cheerleading. Your daughter's a cheerleader, right? Where's she at? On where's she at in the pyramid? She top pyramid. She's base. All right. So she's base pyramid probably tells me she's not the lightest one because usually I think those are the flyers, right? Yep. So what would we do if we're trying to make your daughter the flyer? Well, she wants to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she tries. She, she just, tries, exactly. It's just not her genetic makeup. And that happens. So we have so you've identified what her strengths are and what she's good at so she can be her a part did, of the yep. team, right? That's right. And then we work on that and we develop on how you can benefit the team. Um, you know, where I'd look at this and say, you know what, um, hey, honey, if, if you're going to be the flyer, I don't know if we're going to win the national title, but if we take this little itty bitty thing that's your best friend lives down the street and we put her up there and we can get her to do 16 cartwheels in the middle of the air and you're the base, you can bring home the gold. Now you're onto something different, right? So that's what we got to do is you got to go out and you got to find those. And it takes good leadership to find people to, under, to understand what people's strengths are. And you've got a tool that'll help us, right? So put forth those talents. Find out where they're good at, and let's get them in the right seats. Which leads us into you. So what is strengths? So strengths are your natural innate talents. Uh, it's actually talents that just you're naturally good at. There are things that, um, in my assessment, it gives you the top five strengths, and uh, you can unlock the top 34 uh, themes. Mm-hmm. My last is analytical. So I could be a great communicator and storyteller, and I could woo a room and build up people and give them all the positivity and work really hard while I'm doing it. Uh, But when it comes to really thinking out the details, and I'm more of a shoot-from-the-hip kind of gal, um, (laughs) activator was number six. So um, I lean on people around me for being like, hang on, let's look at all the details and all the options around me, and I will lean on those people before I again shoot from the hip. So, so. let's let's <laughs> test uh, Michael's intuition here. So her number thirty-four on her list was analytics. 
I was attracted to her in a group to work on a project because I knew she had skills that were different than mine. Absolutely. What do you think my number one skill was? Analytics. Yes, Ooh. it was. Bingo. <laughs> I knew that before I even did the <laughs> So, so what happened was is, and it, I mean, it's the coolest feeling to have if you've never been on a team where you can understand and leverage other people's strengths, the camaraderie, the friendship, just this, you do things you've never done before. All right, woo is one of yours, right? What is it, your second or third one? Second. I woo? can't, I can't woo, woo anybody. What Brother, is woo? Winning woo. others over. Yeah. Winning others over. Good salesman. I so definitely uh, you're a wooer. Oh, <laughs> you're but a wooer. So my, my, my guess is if we gave you the strength finder assessment, you'd probably be pretty high in woo. Just based on what I know. Throw the woo. I mean, he does a dance like that. I'm pretty good at that, too. <laughs> <laughs> and mine's definitely not. Mine's on the analytical side. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of the other ones, we went through these um, the other day, and I, I thought I put them down in my notes, and it's on a different file, so I don't remember. But, like, my, my number five was Relator when I went through it. And if we go to the disk profile, mm -hmm. where we flip over to Insights and we get into the colors, mm -hmm. Relator's going to be your... Your yellow. yellow or your green, most likely your yellow, which is your I on the disc profile, in C. inspiring. Yeah. Or it could be the C if it's on the on the green side. S. And, or S, yeah, yeah. S on the green, C is the blue, yeah. cool blue. Yeah. So I've got some of that in me, mm -hmm. but then I go and I do the disc profile and I have none of that stuff in me. So this is another tool that helps find out what your strengths are. And then on the strength side, right, I didn't know I had Relator in me. So that's where you come in, right? Now mm -hmm. you get to help coach us up. It's just great um, when you think about like the best day at work that you've had. Um, what did that day look like? What made it great? You're probably doing things that you enjoy doing that give you energy. And when you focus on your weaknesses, and you know you're stuck on this project, or you're there are things obviously we have to manage around our weaknesses. We don't all have the luxury of just doing things that we're really good at doing every single day. <laughs> um, but there are tools, um, you know, like again with the whole planning and analytical and making decisions and the data. I'll kind of lean on my team members again for my job um, in, in recruiting operations at a large um, tech company. So. It, there are aspects to my job where I don't get to use all my strengths every day. Luckily, with coaching, um, empowering you know people to live their best lives and stuff, I do get to do that. Uh, so it's actually this whole exercise of preparing for this podcast made me realize I need to do more of that and uh, get that good energy because uh, it is a ripple effect. It, there is a lasting impact of if you build up, get people in the right seat doing what they enjoy doing, that energy, it's contagious. Mm -hmm. yes. And it and it flows over to their personal lives and their work lives and their relationships. And you get to know each other. When um, I came in and did the strengths coaching with your team, it was just the camaraderie and things that we learned about the team. It, can you, do you recall? Like, <laughs> oh. what was that oh, experience I, like for you? I you know, know from my side. And, and I do recall. And... So one thing I want to make sure we touch on, though, is, is that was an event. You came in for the day, but that, that event started. It was the catalyst for change. And what we started to do is it started to open up our eyes. And you said you saw camaraderie in there. I would love to w take you back in that room, you know, 24 months after you were there because mm. it was it just kept growing and growing and right. growing and multiplying. But one of the things that, you know, so you went, walked us through there and, and we were struggling as a team trying to identify who we were and what we were about. And Michael, you'd come in before her and we had done the disc profile. Mm -hmm. So we knew who what type of profiles there were. And we were still like trying to figure each other out and trying to understand each other. And then we brought you in, Erica, to help us with the strength finders. And we really started getting some momentum. But there was an aha moment. You remember when you laid the map down in front of oh, me? Oh, yeah. And I about fell out of my chair and you said you've never, you rarely see it happen. What was that? It was. Um, so there are four different uh, groups of all the 34 strengths are kind of categorized. And there's executing, those that, you know, get stuff done, influencing. Uh, and your team was all in this execution <laughs> theme. And I was like, I mean, everyone. What did I'm talking you? not just one. <laughs> there were at least two strengths of every single one of your team members in that executing. So I was like, wow, you guys are getting stuff done. Um, but then in the influencing and relationship building, 
and then strategic thinking were yeah. even lighter. So speed of the packs are turned by the speed of the leader. Yep. <laughs> but what you did is you uncovered some stuff for us. So everybody wanted to get stuff done, and everybody had this urge and this yearning to be to to accomplish stuff, mm -hmm. just to basically get shit done. But it was so strong that we didn't know how to manage it. We didn't know how to lead from it. And then when you brought that in, we started going. So then we had to go down to like, okay, what's your second strongest? What's your third strongest? Mm -hmm. And then we started building profiles with people on what they like to do to get stuff done. And then when somebody would bring us a problem or a project, we were able to look at, okay, what's the goal of the project? Okay, I know who we need to put in charge mm -hmm. of this project. And then we started aligning people to do that. And then all of a sudden we went from, we went through the four stages of a team. <laughs> And if you don't know what that is, it's uh, forming, uh, storming, norming, and performing. And you, we were in the storming stage when you met us. And Michael, we, we were in the storming stage when you did the disc with us. We were stuck in that storming stage for so long trying to figure out what we were doing. And you helped us. So we went from a, from a tornado and a hurricane down to just, you know, like <laughs> sideways <storm>. wind <laughs> in, in a thunderstorm. And then you came in and you cleared us a bigger path and we went to... That's when we moved up to the next one and we went to norming. All right, now we're actually acting like a team. And then lo and behold, once we started getting used to what people were good at, we hit our stride. Mm -hmm. We became a high performing team and we started breaking budgets. We started breaking records. We hit sales goals. We were doing stuff. And the coolest thing was, is people just lost their ego of it. So let's go back. And you said there was four domains of leadership, executing, influencing, relationship building, and strategic thinking. You know where I fall. But I'm working on, I'm working, and this is where it gets really awkward because you talk about weaknesses, right? So relationship building, Relator came out, and I thought that was a weakness of mine. I'm mm -hmm. like, wait a second, it's a strength. So I looked for people to help. And then you got influencing. I'm not very good at influencing. Um, so I needed to look for help. But what, so we covered all those. What was the um, strategic thinking we really didn't get into? But uh, Yeah, strategic thinking. I think that was probably the lowest on your crew. Uh, but whoever was strategic thinking, such as yourself, um, that really led, and I think there are, uh, are fewer in that, and with your blue in you, I think that, that shines through. And so... What do you, you got something I got a question about that strategic thinking. You guys see it a lot. What we've seen is that it is, there's less and less strategic thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a whole nother podcast of how we think <laughs> wow, that is. Yeah. But, Let's do it. I mean, that's a that, that's it's interesting to me. You say that your team has it. I'm seeing it too as we go and we train all over North America in different corporations. Some are large, some are small, mom and pop. But we're seeing the strategic thinking piece seems to be a little uh, lacking in a lot of areas. I, I wonder if there's something. We'll talk about that later. But data uh, overload. We'll, we'll take that one. So we, you're getting us away from <laughs> from strength finders to where we're going into one. And then I'm also working on other podcasts that come into this. And we're gonna get to it at the end, so I don't want to ruin it. But we've already we've already. But what happens if they podcast. just need to go see all the podcasts? Well, then they go. Where to, should they go? They go to dignity hyphen leadership dot com. Right, click on right. the podcast tab and watch, or Never. you can follow Kevin E on YouTube. Monster Millennial, the Monster Millennial K E P X Live. That's it. See, okay. he's going to miss a plug, bro. Say or you can go to Facebook. It. You can See, go that's his to weak spot, uh, one of his strength you, finders. You, yeah. it out. I'm helping well, you out, bro. It's because of influencing right there. We talked <laughs> woo. We mentioned it earlier. We're wooer. talking about wooing, right? So let's get back on track, because man, you, you know me. Off the I'm, bus, bro. I'm sorry, wobbling. So we touched on this earlier, um, and it's you got to know yourself, right? You got to know what your strengths are, and you got to be able to lead from that and being self aware, understanding your blind spots. And one of the things that happened to me when you were in there is I knew I was executing, but when you brought out the relationship part or the relator part, it's like, okay, wait a second. Everybody in here wants to execute. If I can relate to all these people, then they can start doing the executing mm. for me. I'll give them the strategic thinking. And then we start pulling all these different pieces together. And then all of a sudden, our team actually starts working, right? But then the other side of it is, is I have to know who I am, right, to be a leader. I, number one, I believe all things fundamental to be a, I'm just going to say good leader. Um, you've got to know who you are. And if you need help, go back to my website. You can go on there and I can do a, a TTI insights profile on you. I can coach you for an hour. I can show you, I can find your blind spots and help you figure out how to get there through those. All right. And then if you need help on the strength side, what you're good at, we're going to get Erica involved. Um, just break out your checkbook because we're cheap. I mean, we're expensive. We're good. <laughs> But you got to know who know what your team is, right? And if you're always focusing on strengths of your team, you start getting them engaged. 
right? And there's so many people that I, I hear these HR departments or whatever, they'll do an all-employee survey. Um, Michael, your team's not very engaged. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Um, well, let's talk about some leadership things here, right? You know, so is it, where does that engagement come from? It's not the employee's fault that they're not engaged. It's the leadership. Yeah. fault. And where does that start? I mean, it starts right there with you as a leader, and then it goes all the way up to the top of the organization. It goes to how your policies are written. It goes how you execute all those different things. But one of the things I saw, and, and Kevin, you've recorded all these podcasts. You know I love my stats. The odds of an employee being engaged is only 1 in 11. But you can increase that odds to 75% if you lead using strengths. Mm-hmm. So Gallup has actually done some surveys on this. So Gallup owns Clifton Strength Finders. Mm-hmm. Uh, Don Clifton was the founder of it that started, he was the first person that came out with um, strength-based psychology. So he was the first one that said, wait a second, why are we always dissecting what people suck at? And what's wrong with them? Hey, Michael, what's wrong with you? Come see me on my psychologist, let's find out what's wrong with you. He flipped the script. All right. He flipped the script and said, let's find out what's right with you, Mm -hmm. what you're good at, and then let's go lead from that standpoint. And he became a pioneer. And then uh, Tom Rath, his grandson, wrote the book, Strength Finders. And if you want, there's a, you can go out and buy the book. You can take this survey out of there. You need help on what to do next. You need to get a hold of us at Dignity Leadership. We'll get you in touch with Erica and we can move that all on. All right. So let's talk about maximizing your team, right? So as a leader, I'm going to ask you a question, Erica. Mm-hmm. Can you do it all? Absolutely not. Why? No, you've got to lean on your team. I'm good at, again, the influencing, the communication, the positivity. All right, guys, we got this big old change coming up in the organization. Um, I can get them excited about it, but if I have the analytical person as uh, one of my team leads, they're going to be sitting back like, have we explored all the options? Let me see the data and kind of be more deliberate about, you know, before moving forward, they're just not going to blindly follow me. So kind of understanding that your team, who you have on the team, uh, if there's, you know, somebody on there that's a significance or, um, again, the communication, I'm going to sit down and say, hey, tell me something good. Like, what happened last weekend? Tell me where you're from. I'm going to get that, you know, they want that little bit of conversation. Um, some of the deliberate people and input, they're going to want an agenda before a meeting. Uh, There are things, it's about knowing how to communicate as well. Um, I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but we really had some good dialogue in the training uh, with your team because it was kind of being like, give me an example of where you use that strength. Mm -hmm. And then it got, hey, you're also good at that when, you know, uh, we, I don't know, you just kept on going back and forth and when Kevin did this and that. And I think it also, once you have that, that tool of communication and um, relating, they were able to say, hey, can I count on you for this? You can count on this from me. This is what I'm good at. Like, can I, it it was just, um, I don't know, that connectedness. Well, the other, the other piece you did too is when, when you guys were both helping us, We were surviving, right? So the team was already formed. I didn't have a choice. I didn't pick any of them, right? They all picked me or I picked them. or I don't know what it was, but I didn't get a hire. So I I inherited a team for the most part. There was a couple of them on there I did. They didn't even have paddles. They didn't have paddles back then. That was before. (laughs) Well, that was, no, we were doing, we were doing, yeah. We'll get, that's another show. But anyway, um, so what I'm talking about was with this, it was circumstance, right? I didn't know what I was doing and I was looking for help and trying to figure it out. But then what you did is you helped us basically design our team, or I'm going to call it redesign, because they already existed. And we were able to go back and do those pieces you're talking about. And we had those aha moments. Oh, you're good at that too? I'm good. We discovered that we all wanted the same thing, Mm -hmm. but we just had a different passion. And we had to find out who was good at each one of those things and get it out. But then the third piece that you brought out that we're talking about was even though we were after the same thing, it was the diversity we were all different. We all had different backgrounds. We came from different areas. We, we liked different things outside of work. And that diversity helped bring it together to say, you know what, we're different, but we all want the same thing. So how do we pull together, which was a pretty big piece. And that's when we pulled in all the different pieces and we realized we we're executing and it just went on and on and great. on from there. It was pretty cool. It blew up from there. It did blow up from there. 
that's when we, we turn it in, we end up having one of our best years ever. You know what's cool about that is when the strength finders, when, when your whole team realized you were coming at them, you flipped the script, talking about coming from a different angle, not of your, your department is you know, lacking this. You as a person are lacking that. You, every one of them are like walking around with their strengths when they're talking this to you. This is what I'm good at. Yeah, you're like, hey, I'm good at this. You're good at that. So then it creates a, hey, I got some of this I'll give to you. I got some of this good stuff I'll give to you. Uh, instead of these evaluations a lot of times we found with HR mm-hmm. is this is what you're lacking. This is what your manager wants to see better. So when you come with, you flip the script and come from a more positive environment, that's what you got. That's what it brings to the table. And then hence your best year ever. Yeah, it helped me understand who my team was. We talked about this in another podcast, but it also mm-hmm. helps me learn about them and know my team so that I could go out and the only way leaders can be effective is they got to know who they have on their team. <laughs> and it's not just knowing, hey, I got Michael on my team. Hey, I got Eric on my team. It's what makes you tick, mm-hmm. right? Well, they know you care, right? Because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care mm-hmm. about them. Mm-hmm. I mean, That's Kevin, cute. I hope you got that wow. one. That was in slow yeah, motion. Michael, you didn't hit that one at 900 miles an hour. So say it one more time. <laughs> People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care about them. That yep. little piece on the end is yeah, the exactly. important thing. It's all about the people, right? Mm-hmm. So leadership boils down. You don't build business, you build people, and people build a business. Yeah. And you don't leave a job, you leave managers. Yeah. So Damn. so how, much, how are we doing on time over there? Mr. Producer, I think we got what four or five. You get about two and a half minutes. We got five minutes left. We I think I just heard minutes. five minutes left. So there's four pieces. Bring the rag, baby. So there's four pieces I want to talk about, and we're going to try to knock them out here in the last couple of minutes. There's four pieces of build up strength finders coming out of the book, and I believe in them. I've taught myself and worked with them, and, and how to practice them. Number one is trust, right? You got to have trust on a team, and we did an mm-hmm. entire podcast on that. But I got three keys that can help you quickly um, build trust. And it's be honest with your thoughts and intentions. You've got to be yourself. You've got to be you. And so what you said earlier, show them that you care, mm-hmm. right? And then you have to solicit, understand, and appreciate candid feedback. Not just any feedback. You need that, that feedback that one, somebody tells you something that hurts. Uh-oh. But then you've got to digest it, and you've got to go figure out what it is in there. Because they're telling you something, probably hitting one of your blind spots. Mm-hmm. And then the last piece about building trust is you got to use empathy to put your words into action. you got to show them you care, which leads me to compassion, which is the second part. So trust, compassion, and it's never too late to be too kind or too caring, right? Kindness and caring leaders engage, lead, or engage their employees at a higher level than those that do not. So we go back to that whole engagement thing, right? Show them some compassion, you're going to start getting some engagement. Especially last year. Yes, exactly. Last year during all this pandemic really crap happy. going on. And it's still going on now, and I think we're going to see some more things coming out of it. But we're, that's a different show. All right, consistency, right? got a lot right? of shows on the bucket here. Heck, yeah. I'm trying to book him up. I'm trying to get my rate down. You figure, if, like, what is it? Supply, demand? Um, there's no demand. All right. But uh, consistency, right? So consistency is the other one. Um, the stability. Stability, yeah. yeah. So you got to be predictable. you got to be who you are, right? Mm-hmm. If you're all over the What happens when you just keep flip-flopping on people? Like you lose trust. Exactly. It circles back. Yep, it goes back. And then the last one, this is probably one of my favorite ones, and it's hope. And it's knowing that the future is promising and it's bright. And that is a powerful motivator. If you have people that are hopeful, they're willing to show up. They start having confidence. They're excited to help you. When there's no hope mm. and they don't see the future and they don't have the tools to do their job, Confidence goes down, stress mm-hmm. goes up, the rumor mill starts. And it just turns into just, it's a disaster. Well, hope is the catalyst for all change. As long Absolutely. as we have hope, we're okay. And that's, that's, that's a lot of what you as Denny Leadership are selling. You're selling hope because there, that's exactly, there is hope out there. Street Finder is, is that. All the things that you're, that you're selling, what do we sell? Books, tapes, programs. No, and you're selling hope. That's the catalyst for all change. People that are listening to this right now as a leader, a leader of what? I'm not a leader. I just do. No, you're a leader no, of something, whether everybody. it be your family, yep. whether it, which is the most important thing you can lead, whether it's department, whether it be, you know, friendships. Hope is a powerful word that you just said. Yes. And I told you when we started, it was one of my favorite ones. Yep. And I've read a couple books on hope. I've done yep. some other research on it. And hope is actually scientific. And that's 
It's coming up. Another Kevin podcast. E. It's another, another podcast. podcast. <laughs> it's coming up. There's a debate coming up. All right. So we're up against the clock. Lock and load, Kevin. Kevin E's giving me the, he's giving me the sign off. So <laughs> Sorry, thanks, guys. thanks for joining us today on our leadership journey. If you're looking for more leadership guidance, please reach out to us on dignityleadership.com out on the World Wide Web. Dignity Leadership Consulting on Facebook. Dignity Leadership, all one word on Instagram. Or at DLC with Rich on Twitter. Keep paddling. Thank you.